Wanting to speak to part two of this oxymoronic environment Canterbury temporary commissioner and improved water management bill, particularly clauses 14, 17 and 18 and to amendments in my name. But I wanted to touch first on comments made by uh, t uh, uh, the member opposite from the Māori Party, Te Uraroa Flavel, around how the Māori Party is supporting this bill in the hope that it will improve Māori representation on Environment Canterbury. And I have to say that is a forlorn hope on two counts. The first is this bill disestablishes Environment Canterbury and comments in public by the Minister for the Environment make very clear that this is the death knell of Environment Canterbury. It will not see light again in 2013 or earlier. Or earlier. And I challenge the Minister to correct me on that point. The second thing is, I would have thought by now the Māori Party has learned that this is a government which does not want to deliver to Māori aspirations for improved representation. Look to the Auckland super city as an example of that. In respect of Clause 14 of the Bill, uh, which talks about commissioners having collective knowledge and expertise in certain matters, Environment Canterbury's Chair and Deputy Chair, Alec Neil and Joe Kane, put a proposal to the Minister that what he could do is follow the model that sometimes happens in schools, where a commissioner is appointed and works alongside a principal to improve the outcomes for that school. So effectively, they were suggesting commissioners could come in and provide some of the expertise that everybody acknowledges Environment Canterbury should, uh, would benefit from in terms of improving its water management and its approach to it, reinforced, one would hope, by some new legislation with new environmental safeguards and quality standards. But the Minister has not chosen to do that, and so I'm moving by way of amendment that we should, in fact, have the appointment of all existing councillors as commissioners in Environment Canterbury. That will serve to deliver the expertise, the expertise that this Minister seeks in respect of organisational change, freshwater management, local authority governance and management uh, in terms of uh, the Canterbury region and its people, and he might like to supplement uh, some of the gaps in environment Canterbury's current representation in terms of Māori representation, which I acknowledge as a deficiency which needs to be remedied. So that would be something that I, I think could be adopted. That would effectively put in place the model suggested by the Chair and Deputy of Environment Canterbury. Can I turn, and just to make a comment around the idea of this council being dysfunctional, which we heard once or twice in the chamber through the course of this debate. Again, I'd like to quote from the Creech report on that issue. Our investigation did not bear this out. Quote, mostly the tensions that exist arise from differing political perspectives and not from any fundamental dysfunction. So there's no case, no case to say that this was a dysfunctional council. It had its tensions, it had its challenges. It was starting to come to terms with the issues around the management of, of, uh, of water in particular. And I note also in clause uh, 14.1b requiring commissioners to have expertise in fresh water management. Well, fresh water is a huge challenge. It's a big part of Environment Canterbury's job. But, of course, this minister went for the doctor in respect of Environment Canterbury, even though the Creech Review identified Environment Canterbury was doing a good job in respect of its other functions, notably public transport, which, in fact, is the biggest percentage of its current budget. And, in fact, it's acknowledged uh, it, within Australasia as having delivered some of the best uh, results for public transport by way of integrated planning, ticketing, real-time information, acknowledged across Australasia for the bus services that it provides and the way those are integrated and actually work. In Clause 17, there is a provision that the Commission must call an election when its work is complete. What I'm wanting to propose by way of amendment and tabled as a supplementary order paper is that, in fact, there must be a... Uh, once, the, once the commissioners have completed their work in terms of bringing together a proposed regional policy statement or plans, as defined in 60, Section 61 of the Bill, then let's have the election. Let's not wait until 2013 if the government is genuine in saying uh, 
uh, even if it's a mixed message, around trying to resume some form of democracy in Canterbury, let's have the commissioners come in and do their job. If this is such a, an easy task to pick up and perform, let them have the, the election as soon as that task is completed. That's covered in uh, section 17, clause 17 of the bill and my amendment to that. In clause 18, the, um, I'm proposing an amendment that the Commissioner's remuneration should be the same as the Councillor's remuneration. At the moment, an environment Canterbury councillor earns somewhere around the order of $50,000 a year. For that, that's right, set by the remuneration authority which deals with other salaries around this building. That's an appropriate mechanism. And this is ratepayers' money. I have ratepayers who struggle to meet their environment Canterbury rates, most especially last year, Mr Chair, Mr Chair, most especially through mm -hmm. last year, where a, an increase of 10%, 10.8% I think it was, happened in the environment Canterbury rate, and the reason for that was there was a deadlock on the Council around starting to part charge farmers for the management of water supplies. So the rates of my constituents in poor, const poor areas of my electorate, like Phillipstown and Linwood, Shirley and Myraho, went up by 8% more than they needed to if there had been uh, a decision to increase a part charge rate on the farming community, which was appropriate. It's now, in fact, coming into place this year, so that's good to see. But, in fact, there we have a situation where a current councillor, and I think of a councillor uh, such as Councillor Jane Demeter, who, uh, uh, whose ward is within my electorate. I recently uh, was approached by a couple who had had a, a new fireplace installed under the very good Environment Canterbury lead and driven clean, uh, uh, clean air accord that they've been putting in place. The fireplace wasn't working. I approached Councillor Demeter. She resolved the issue. Another fireplace was installed because it wasn't working properly. Can I approach one of the commissioners with that sort of constituency issue? Will I be able to go to them and say, I need a resolution on this? Or are they only there to do one job? Are they only there actually to implement a new rapid regime in terms of water? If, as far as this bill is concerned. I want to know that my constituents will have representation for the taxation they are going to be paying. And I say to them, if they are going to be paying the Commissioner's rates, they shouldn't be paying any more for that privilege. They should be getting paid about $1,000 a week. And I'd like the, the uh, Minister to give this House an assurance that we're not going to see the sorts of profligacy that sometimes happens when we get people appointed by the government to these jobs. Are we going to see levels around $1,000 a week, or are we more likely going to see levels around $1,000 or $2,000 a day? I'd like to know what sort of budget he's got in mind in terms of how this, this, this set of commissioners will operate. And because it's not him who's going to be paying the bill, it's the people of my electorate and across Canterbury, the ratepayers of, 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 of environment Canterbury ratepayers, who are going to be paying this bill. And I think they have every right to know what's envisaged in terms of the rate of payment to these commissioners, who, how much are they going to be paid, what's going to be the estimate for their travelling costs. So we have commissioners such as Dame Margaret, who I understand to be Wellington resident, so there's going to be a considerable expense in terms of airfares, in terms of hotel accommodation, in terms of out-of-town expenses, meals and other things. And, and ratepayers across Canterbury are going to be having to pick up the tab without any recourse, any recourse to the minister, to the government, to the parliament, to a select committee process for a say on this. Not only that, as we've learnt, the Minister also has the ability to alter the terms of reference for those commissioners, so if they're not operating in a way that he wants them to deliver, he can change that by executive fiat without any reference back to this House. And I think that is just un uh, uh, un really unacceptable. At the moment, the Chair of Environment Canterbury, his salary is $142,000 a year. The Deputy Chair is paid $56,710. The Council is the grand sum of $53,294. So therefore around $1,000 a week for most of those councillors for the duties they perform to their constituencies across the environment Canterbury Rohe. And I think that's an appropriate level of remuneration, probably a little under, under what they should be paid in terms of the job that I know some of them do. The call that they have upon them, they do act as if they are uh, 
acting in the same way as an MP does, servicing their constituencies, acting for constituents. And I'd like the Minister to take a call and tell us how are these new commissioners going to perform? Are they going to take up that bread and butter work that the regional councillors do? Are they going to meet constituents? Are they going to take up constituents' issues? Are they going to iron out the red tape issues that emerge when you're dealing with a council? on a consistent basis? Are they going to help their constituents navigate through the bureaucracy? Are they going to deal with queries about rate demands? Are, they going to, are, they going to, are we also going to see the, the commissioners pick up the just published annual plan for environment Canterbury, 